I mean, mastering is, I mean, it's always uh, changing. It changed al already in the, in the past because of the mixing, mixes. Uh, are changing, the tools that the people use are changing. And that time uh, mastering was more or less like being a sculptor. So you have a big block of sound and then you have to get the track out of it until everything is in front of you like it should be. You should look at the things that seem redundant rather than at things that seem missing. And if you have the feeling um, that some, something is missing from the, the sonic image, then you should rather try to flip that perception and see what is covering it up. Working with the artists close together, also have a chat before the mastering starts, uh, to know where the music comes from, how it was produced, what's the idea behind, of, uh, behind the music, is really important to know what the outcome should be. Because of course I have my idea what it could be, but maybe that's wrong. Having got it on the computer then it's a case of pressing play and setting the levels. And I'll say certainly with this kind of music, getting those filters in there because I know there's some quite spiky high frequency sounds which don't always translate very well. And you know, were it to need more treble or bass or limiting, that's that all happens at this stage. It's all live to vinyl. I don't need to re-record the vinyl the output of the desk onto the computer. Any adjustments for vinyl, the way I work, is just done live to vinyl. With CD, with CD or digital download files, you can more or less, you know, if you want huge amounts of treble, huge amounts of bass, you can have it. Yeah, you know, it's not going to distort, or probably not going to distort. But vinyl being an older and much more delicate medium, you've got to basically control the extremes of the frequencies, you know, the very highs, the very lows that just won't work on vinyl or distort or the record will jump or whatever. So you've got to kind of rein things in a bit. But by doing that, you're often actually making it sound a bit nicer anyway. You know, a big part of what makes vinyl sound um, recognizable uh, and which makes the, again, erratic moment of vinyl is actually playback distortion. And uh, it's just very, it can be very, very pleasant. Vinyl has something something special, it has something, um, the appeal, the, the, the haptic, that you can touch it, that you actually can see the, the, the music. But beside that, of course, uh, vinyl can sound better. That doesn't mean that it's totally uh, a one-to-one -one copy of what's being recorded. The analog domain, is, it's really important to really get into the sound. And uh, in the digital domain, it's always like, yeah, is the, is the waveform looking like this or like this? This is good and this is bad. There's now two companies left worldwide that uh, make actual cutting lacquers. If one of them goes broke, then it's only going to be one. That's going to suck. And um, so that is the best chance, uh, I guess, Finally, it's not going to be any different format. It's going to be resources that are going to kill the vinyl industry. I don't think that mastering will uh, disappear. I think it's rather higher in demand, maybe, uh, in, and maybe potentially even more invasive in terms of uh, what the music is going to be. Compared to the, to the earlier times where I tried to remove a lot of things to, to free up the, the music, uh, today it's more and more that I have to add things, so it's more the, the way you work uh, uh, changes. The tools, as we said before, stay more or less the same. <laughs> <laughs>